Forget movies, forget video games, forget sports. The most hotly anticipated spectacle this year is one that hasn't even officially been confirmed. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, of course, about the Republican presidential primary showdown between former President Donald J. Trump in one corner and in the other corner, the man that many diehard Trump 2016 and 2020 supporters have shifted their focus and affections toward, mm -hmm. Ronald Dion DeSantis. Dion, That huh? is his wow. middle name, Dion. Ding, ding. Let's start this match. Uh, so Ron DeSantis has not declared any intention to run for president, by the way, but a lot of people want him to. And this, of course, is very upsetting to Trump, who sees himself as responsible for getting DeSantis elected governor of Florida in the first place, which is, is true. He's right. Ron DeSantis owes pretty much everything to MAGA. And it would be very disloyal for him to turn around and run against the guy who made him who he is. You just don't do that. Mm. So Trump has already preemptively talked some shit, uh, referring to DeSantis as Ron DeSanctimonious <laughs> at a rally, uh, reportedly referring to DeSantis privately as Meatball Ron, and then playfully denying that in a in that very Trumpian way of his where it kind of seems like he is in fact calling him Meatball Ron, even while he's saying that he wouldn't ever call him Meatball Ron. Mm. Uh, Trump also reportedly has been upset with DeSantis for a while for appearing to steal some of Trump's mannerisms and ways of speaking, which, again, he's right. DeSantis has definitely been doing that. Yeah. Uh, and then most recently, Trump basically called Ron DeSantis a groomer for partying with high school students back when he was a teacher, which, sorry, yet again, Trump's got a bit of a point here. That's a pretty sus thing to do. Yeah, he got the oppo research and immediately went to Truth Social. Like, didn't even let it cook, just sat there and... You know, I'm sure he has more behind the scenes, but, uh, yeah. Uh, if all of this seems pretty one-sided, that's because it is. When DeSantis has been asked about it, he has responded with basically, well, that's none of my concern. My concern is getting things done and fighting back against the woke Biden administration. All right, Jeb. Uh, anyways, this week we got some DeSantis news that will surely be used against him by the former president at some point because it's gross and it's weird. <laughs> Uh, in a Daily Beast article, mostly exploring how bad Ron DeSantis is at actually talking to people and doing anything that isn't planned in advance, they dropped this incredible nugget. Towards the end of the article, too, you had to, you had to do quite a bit really of reading. Really buried the here. lead. The chatter over DeSantis' public engagement has also surfaced past unflattering stories about his social skills, particularly his propensity to devour food during meetings. He would sit in meetings and eat in front of people, a former DeSantis staffer told the Daily Beast, always like a starving animal who has never eaten before, getting shit everywhere. Enshrined in DeSantis lore is an episode from four years ago. During a private plane trip from Tallahassee to Washington, D.C. in March of 2019, DeSantis enjoyed a chocolate pudding dessert by eating it with three of his fingers, according to two sources familiar with the incident. I know, three fingers. Pudding run! Yeah, a lot of people are saying pudding run these days. It's really starting to catch on. The man eats pudding with his hands. I think that's disgusting. I think it's so gross. Melania would never let me do that. It's disgusting. Also, just the fact that he just destroys any plate in front of him. I would, I could definitely picture him wearing a bib. And that's like, I mean, putting aside, yeah, the, his eating habits, I actually want him to declare his presidency or his uh, intention to run now because that means he gets to go to the Idaho State Fair mm -hmm. and all those, all those fucking He's state- sweating. <laughs> oh, God. All those state fairs that they make all the presidential candidates go to and debase themselves eating a bunch of, like, carnival food. Yeah. And, like, there's always the pictures that come out of it. I mean, the goat at this point is Pete Buttigieg, who uh, just looks like a hungry rat devouring food yeah. <laughs> in every picture from uh, those, those state fairs. But I want to see Ron DeSantis go to oh. town on like Yeah, no, he'll anything. take a corn dog down in just one bite. Blah, 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 no, no, just it all over. And just pull the stick out. But no, they said he gets his shit everywhere. So he's got, I don't know how he's eating Get it. Get this he's man in a pie everywhere. eating contest. Oh, yeah. You know what would actually seal the victory for him is if he goes down on July 4th to Nathan's and competes in the national hot dog eating contest against hero Joey Chestnut. I think he could do it. Yeah. Come on, Ron. What do you say? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, look, putting Ron, it's a disgusting move to just dig food out with your fingers and yeah. lick them clean. I mean, if I don't know what receptacle. If you're a child, I guess, was, maybe? Was this like a pudding cup? Because if then you can just sort of drink it straight out of the cup. There's no need to get oh, fingers I've, involved. I haven't had a pudding cup in a very long time. But yeah, you can, 
you kind of have to lick around inside yeah. of it to get all the good stuff out. I need to know the context of like why there was pudding on this airplane, but not spoons. It has to be. Just or if he was offered a spoon and he was like, no, that's all right. Also, I don't just, need that. Especially on an airplane, just touching everything. I know it's a private jet because it's... You think private place. jets are cleaner than... No, the... but like I could just imagine him using the bathroom and then coming out. Oh, put, put it. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Maybe he did this because he like pooped his pants or something. And then he's like, oh, I got an idea. I'll eat pudding in a really gross way. So then pe when people see the poo stains on my pants, they'll be like, oh, well, that's just the pudding that he was eating like a, like a <laughs> starving animal. <laughs> he definitely didn't shit himself. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a disgusting thing to imagine because he's all, he's a person who already looks disgusting. Yeah. Uh, so we're not sure whether this is more or less disgusting than Amy Klobuchar eating salad with a comb, but it's gross. Yeah. What is wrong with these people? They're have politician. they no manners? No, no, they're literal reptile people. Uh, eat McDonald's on the plane like a normal person. Yeah, I mean, like a previous like, president. Yeah. Not the healthiest option, but like it would be like if Trump was like messy. having his chicken nuggets or whatever he has, and then like he just takes barbecue sauce and then like wipes it on the nugget. And yeah, he would never. He would never do. He that. He would never. Mm -mm. It's a low class behavior. <laughs> Anyways, uh, one of the few benefits of living in the age of AI is that while we don't have photographic evidence of Ron DeSantis eating pudding with his hands, we do have digital recreations like these pictures here showing Puddin' Ron absolutely going to town on some chocolate pudding. What a time to be alive. Yeah, that's quite a lot of chocolate there. One of them has what appears to be either a pudding dessert shaped like a person or a person completely covered with pudding that DeSantis is eating the pudding off of. Um, AI really going places. That mid-journey V5, it's, uh, wow. You know, finally, there's a good use for it. Finally, yes. yeah. Every every couple of weeks, I'm like, you know what? This AI shit's not all bad. And then, bam! Yeah. Hits you with Puddin' Ron. Puddin' Ron and uh, Trump playing Overwatch and Joe Biden talking about smoking stems. Yeah. Yeah. I do, I love that, uh, you know, so far, the best DeSantis nicknames are so disgusting. Yeah. Swampy Ron, Puddin' Ron. Swampy Ron, yeah, that's another, and that was one that was coming. Yeah, the AI, AI yeah. came up with that. And it's, and it's like, yeah, it is perfect because he's from Florida, which is mostly swamp, and he's, uh, you know, of the metaphorical swamp. I think you could also, you know, if you wanted to do without the the name, just call him Florida Man because it represents yeah. so much of what he is. But Trump's also a Florida man, so he can't go there. If Trump's a Florida man, because he evaded New York City. But those are like the biggest Florida men are the people that choose to live in Florida. True. Yeah, I left. Yeah. And I don't like going back. It's like once a being year a now to see Being a Florida man my, by like, choice nieces. is so much more serious of a condition than being assigned Florida man at birth. Oh, and there's a lot of people doing that now. It's uh, it's. Oh, yeah. It used to be to you go there to die because you're old as sin. Uh, but now it's like you're going there... Uh, because you're a bigot. You're buy, yeah, you're buying into an idea. And, and Flor then, Florida presents an idea. You're like, I'm gonna get down there, get one of those houses in Florida. Oh my God! How much are the how much how much is the home insurance here? Oh, what? oh they're saying something about the uh, the whole state's gonna sink into the ocean, and that's why the rates are sky high. Every time well, a whatever. hurricane hits, it decimates an entire city, and the home insurance rates for everyone else goes sky high. So uh, it's only a matter of time until it's unlivable. Did you hear about the uh, the giant? iceberg of uh, seaweed that is heading straight towards Florida. <laughs> it's a patch of seaweed in the Atlantic uh, that is like the size of the United States that usually just floats back and forth between the Caribbean and Africa, but mm. it's uh, it's heading straight towards Florida. Oh, God. And it's just going to like fuck everything up. It's just going to sit in the Gulf. Uh, the Gulf. Yeah. Uh, it, it'll kill like all the coral there. It'll poison the water. Like if you go in the water, you're going to get like skin oh, rashes I'll, and shit. Already just in, in typical Florida fashion, and it's not entirely human's fault, but, you know, it exacerbates thing, things. Uh, it's like spring break right now, which is like, Killer time for Florida beaches. Finally, some time to make some money. And red tide is just across the entire west coast of Florida. You can't, you can't even go to the beach. You breathe it in and it hurts your lungs. Well, so you know, that's the cost of freedom. It is. Anyway, speaking of gag-inducing Republican news. Remember Getter? The Getter social media network arose in the wake of the crackdowns that happened across mainstream social media in the wake of January 6th, when Trump was banned from Twitter and Facebook, along with lots and lots of election deniers. 
and COVID truthers. Uh, Getter joined Gab and Parler as free speech alternatives where users could speak their mind without fear of censorship. Mm -hmm. uh, each of these sites was really hoping to be the new social network of choice for Donald Trump. But then Trump just created his own social network, Truth Social. And then Elon Musk bought Twitter and started unbanning accounts left and right. So the appeal of sites like Getter and their entire purpose really has obviously been on the decline. But rather than just give up, Getter is seeking to maintain its moderate relevance with a feature that absolutely none of those other sites have, nor are they probably willing to go, go near. Um, here's Rolling Stone with more. Fighting to survive in the crowded ecosystem of far-right social media companies, the pro-Trump platform Getter has in recent weeks held high-level deliberations on the oddest of business pivots. Remaking the site to add an online clearinghouse for... <laughs> <laughs> Re remaking the site to add an online clearinghouse for human sperm. <laughs> but it's not just any sperm. Oh! The proposal would see the company expand to include a marketplace for semen from men who haven't taken any of the vaccines against COVID-19. Three sources familiar with the matter <laughs> and a fourth briefed on the situation. I've only been briefed on it. <laughs> Describe serious, <laughs> repeated discussions about creating the online anti-vax semen market <laughs> in which unvaccinated men would self-advertise and sell sperm to the highest bidder. Oh, and what a person that would be. Two of the sources say stakeholders have gone so far as to explore possible testing requirements to ensure specimens came from unvaccinated donors. How would you test whether someone is unvaccinated? Well, you, you smell, and if you can't smell anything, then you know it's good because you probably have COVID. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do but love I, that like, the, uh, the at least one source was like, now, now, okay, look, I'm not. It was just, we were spitballing. We we like to have spitball sessions where anything goes. I heard about it, but and, I, I, uh, you know, I wasn't involved in that it. Was a, the, the boardroom is a safe space, yeah. and, you know, we talk about a lot of ideas. This was one idea that we talked about a lot, but it's just an idea. Yeah. And you know what? I think we've kind of got a point about, like, you know, the sperm. People want that sperm. And if we can provide that sperm, well, baby, <laughs> eat your heart out, Elon Musk. Because Yeah, uh, I'd like no, to see Twitter match this. No sperm on Twitter, I'll tell you that. Uh -huh. No. Mm. Well, according to the reporting, this idea comes via one of Getter's financial backers, Guo Wengjui, a Chinese billionaire who is a fugitive from the Chinese government and who was arrested this week by the FBI on fraud charges and also had a mysterious fire breakout in uh, the place where he lived in New York. This guy's got a weird uh, path. He, he's like one of uh, Steve Bannon's like close confidants. He was, oh, he was okay. with Bannon on the boat when Bannon got arrested. It was his boat. Wow. Man, all these, all these things crossing paths. You love to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. So back to the article. Guo himself is an adherent to the conspiracy theory that the COVID vaccines will eventually cause mass infertility. In some versions of the theory online, the sterilization is unintentional. In others, it's part of a mass conspiracy to depopulate the planet. The conspiracy theory has grown so widespread that even Nicki Minaj claimed that a relative's friend in Trinidad had experienced swollen testicles and impotence due to the vaccine. Oh, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Leading to debunking from U.S. and Trinidadian public health officials. Unvaccinated adherents to the theory often describe themselves as purebloods, <laughs> a, a nod to the Harry Potter books, and discuss a future in which they'll be called upon for mass breeding efforts. I'm doing my part. In reality, it's all nonsense. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has repeatedly debunked conspiracy theories that COVID-19 vaccines impair either male or female fertility. And I got a couple of friends and extended family members that can prove this. Yeah, correct. like I feel like it's been long <laughs> enough now we would have seen this. Like uh, we, We've got friends that keep, you know, Popping them off. Yeah, I know many, many people who've <laughs> had children since getting vaccinated for COVID. So, um, I don't know. Your yeah. theory might have might have some holes. And I it. would say a lot of the users on Getter, uh, st you know, statistically probably not the most uh, highest percentage of uh, having kids, at least right now. Spending uh, all their no, time. I, I think on a, a lot. I think a lot of them had kids. They don't see them very often anymore because oh. their bitch wife <laughs> won't let them, or they won't <laughs> talk to me anymore yeah. for some strange reason. That bitch ex-wife took full custody. Yeah, and uh, that's why Donald Trump needs to come back. I think it's it's more like in Will Summers' new book. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, of uh, Q people who are like, my kids won't talk to me. Yeah. And also on the other side of the thing, the kids being like, hey, how do I deal with a parent who's gone completely off the deep end? Right. So. Anyway, it continues. 
Glow has already pitched one business scheme based on unvaccinated sperm, including his own. Quote, all the fellow fighters' sperm and eggs will be put for auction on our getter between June 1st and June 6th, 2023, Guo said on a February 22nd live stream, where he claimed to have amassed nearly 6,000 eggs and millions of sperm. What? It's like so one, like one, one load. load? <laughs> <laughs> millions of sperm from unvaccinated dogs. I wonder who it came from. <laughs> yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> it will be the most meaningful event of this year. We will auction off the best sperm and eggs, which of course include my sperm. How are you evaluating the sperm? Also, he admitted he's the one that's provided the yeah. sperm. Like no, like millions. Yes, there are millions of sperm, and it's only going to be the best. I, the, I much the like best a, sperm. R- like Ron DeSantis, I dig through it with my fingers and mm. make sure that I get the best. Three stuff. fingers, <laughs> get the, the free finger test. Yep, that's. That's good, sp- good sperm right there. Mm, yes. Mm-hmm. Ah, very good, very good. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Uh, oh, ah, there's a problem with my pan, my plan. You see, I've been arrested by the FBI. See, you pull out your phone and you you three finger the sperm, and this is getting demonetized. Yeah. And you see if the five G signal on your phone uh, yes. like increases as the cum gets closer. It's to like the, phone. the Ghostbusters ghost tracker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we all have a. Uh, you know, a cum analyzer in our pockets right now, and you don't Nobody's even realize it. Nobody's using it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Well, I guess I was wrong about tech innovation being over, because that's pretty incredible. It's a, an exciting time we're living in. Anyway, so yeah, this is quite quite the business plan. Mm-hmm. I love it. But yeah, Guo Wingwei's arrest might mean that it never sees fruition. Sad. <laughs> it's a shame, because if harvesting semen, strong, unvaccinated semen, is what you're looking to do, well, buddy... A recent video posted by Dr. Jordan Peterson seems like it could be really helpful for maximizing profits. <laughs> the answer's right there! We can bring Henry Ford's assembly line yes. mentality uh-huh. to this process. Yeah. We can maximize sperm production. Yeah. And just like Jordan Peterson seemed to, uh, you know, show, it looks like fun. Yeah. And look, we're not talking about a nefarious Chinese communist dick-sucking factory here. We're talking about a virtuous and good American capitalist dick-sucking factory. Yes, much like TikTok versus Instagram, the CCP's dick-sucking factory and America's dick-sucking factory, they're the same but different. So, anyways, uh, (laughs) (laughs) thank you to everyone who... uh, (laughs) You know, hits the thank button or the join button or it checks out our sponsors because, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no shot in hell. Absolutely not. That this is <laughs> going to be a monetized video. I totally video. understand. Not going to fight If there's it. an ad in front of this, it's going straight to YouTube's pockets, not us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, whew. Um, but, you know, we had to, you know, explain things in detail. Had and, to do it to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, moving on now to your weekly George Santos update. Uh, There isn't much. The FBI is apparently looking into the fact that during his campaign, Santos acted as some sort of middleman in the uh, sale of a $19 million (laughs) yacht, which was sold by one of his donors and bought by another one of his donors. It's a normal thing we do when you're campaigning. You you help your donors uh, find people to buy their... Extremely expensive yachts. Yes, you uh, you act as a as a uh, and you, escrow and account. And maybe your... you take a little uh, you take a little finder's fee. Uh, yeah, for exactly. Uh, I think he did. And, uh, uh, he did file paperwork already for his next campaign. Oh, a good. Bit presumptuous. Anyway, there seems to be some possibility that Santos's role in that deal, the, the yacht deal, played a part in how his campaign was able to raise such a huge amount of money for. A House of Representatives race that no one really cared about. No. But uh, what's more noteworthy here is that this is just one of around a dozen leads being pursued by the FBI regarding Santos, which indicates that they're taking this seriously, and he might actually be in trouble if they find something airtight they can prosecute him with, which seems like only a matter of time, based on everything else we know about this guy. Um, you, You know, you find one ant in your house, there's a million ants in the drywall, and uh, yeah, that's this guy's got so many scams under his belt. You got to put a little trap down, like a billion dollar yacht deal. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of Santos, there's uh, another freshman Republican congressman we've covered recently who has also been caught heavily embellishing his resume. Andy Ogles first caught our attention when it was reported that he'd repeatedly lied about being an economist, being a former cop, and being an international sex crimes expert. The George Santos comparisons were obvious, and it turns out they do not stop there. Because Andy Ogles, like George Santos, also stands accused of having raised a bunch of money on GoFundMe for a specific cause, and then just pocketing the money. 
a cause like near and dear to a lot of people's uh, hearts. A, a a a very sad cause. Well, it has to be something like that because why would people ever question it? That would be evil. Right. Yeah. Here's Vice. Tennessee Republican Representative Andy Ogles reportedly raised more than $23,000 on the fundraising platform in 2014, pledging to use the money to build a children's burial no. ground named for his stillborn son. Oh, my God. The burial ground was never built, however, and Ogles won't say what he did with the money, according to Nashville TV station WTVF. Last month, Ogles admitted to embellishing his academic credentials, saying he was mistaken as to which degree he graduated with, but he's now facing new scrutiny over the fundraiser for the burial ground, which he launched in 2014. At the time, Ogles, who is listed as the organizer of the fundraiser, said that Lincoln's place, quote, will create a place for Lincoln's new play friends as they wait in heaven for their families. He said families would bear no cost for the burial ground. Quote, the burial ground will feature a life-size statue of Jesus watching over the children, benches for families to sit while surrounded by flowers in the special garden for little ones who left us too soon, the fundraiser said. Okay, so to be clear, it's horrible that Andy Ogles and his wife had to go through the pain of having a stillborn child. Having said that, it's also horrible to raise money off that pain, with presumably at least some of that money coming from families who also experience stillbirth and then just, you know, keep the money instead of doing what you said you were going to do. Ogles apparently said back in 2015 that bureaucratic red tape regarding cemeteries, all that red tape regarding cemeteries, yeah. had prevented him from following through. But that was eight years ago. And Nashville's News Channel 5 recently looked into that claim and couldn't find any evidence that government regulations would have prevented Ogles from following through with his promises. Uh, Ogles refused to talk to reporters about this, but did release a statement condemning reporters for looking into it. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we're all how, done here. How dare you? And also claims that he used the money to help other families without providing any proof. But you would hope that that's actually true. Yeah. Um, but there, you would they, be, hopefully it would be easy to find the families that received these donations. So the people that gave money, uh, the News Channel 5 talked to a bunch of those people, and they were all like, yeah, I never heard anything about it, but it's like, I didn't want to say anything, because it's like... That's exactly the point. Yeah, yeah. they're like, ah, look, I feel weird even talking about this now, but like, was, yeah. It was 25 bucks, I yeah. mean, you know... <laughs> it was like, yeah, I don't know. It's I'll just, take the L on this I one. I don't know, it might be sketchy, it might be not, I feel horrible for even bringing this up, but like, yeah, there's... I mean, if he had helped people with it, that would be great. It is a little weird that as far as uh, the books go, the money just sort of vanished. And the burial plot that he said he was going to build in an existing cemetery, which apparently is a pretty easy thing to set up if you come to a cemetery with a bunch of money and say, I'd like to make a special burial plot. Yeah, that sounds a lot easier. I, it seems like something cemeteries would be into and they would help with all the whatever fucking regulation red tape are yeah. involved in that. Um, so, yeah. Uh Want to give him the benefit of doubt here, but it seems pretty fucking gross. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, sorry about all the politics. I missed when this was a gaming channel, personally. But uh, we do have some non-political news coming up in the headlines half of this show. But before we move on, this episode is sponsored by Factor. Power up for springtime with Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Get nutritious, chef-prepared meals delivered straight to your door, leaving you time and energy to tackle everything on your to-do list. Look and feel your best in time for warmer weather with calorie-smart meals around 550 calories or less. Too busy to cook? With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, too. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Factor has delicious, flavor-packed meals to help you live to the fullest. Choose from keto, vegan and veggie, calorie smart, and protein plus options on the menu each week. Prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, each meal has all of the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long. With 34 chef-prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Enjoy meals for any time of day with breakfast options like egg bites, smoothies, and more. Plus, replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 45-plus add-ons. One good one I had this week was uh, like a chickpea marsala. Ooh, mm. so good. Uh, so if you want to cut back on takeout, you can get Factor instead. Not only is Factor cheaper than takeout, but meals are ready faster than restaurant delivery. A lot faster. In just two minutes, in fact. Put the time and money that you save towards planning activities for when the weather warms up. Eating vegan or veggie is a snap with Factor. Because each meal is prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, you know that your Factor meal has all of the ingredients you want and nothing you don't. And if you're looking to mix it up, you can add a protein to select vegan and veggie meals each week. 
Get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes? No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 and use code weeklyweird50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code weeklyweird50 at factormeals.com slash weeklyweird50 to get 50% off your first box. This episode is also sponsored by Bespoke Post. It's always an exciting day when a new box of awesome from Bespoke Post arrives and you get to open it up and see what's inside. Is it a collection of different hot sauces? A perfect size bag for a weekend getaway? A hammock that fits in your glove box? Every unique item from Bespoke Post is hand curated from a small business that you probably would have never heard of otherwise. From cozy essentials to travel must-haves and cocktail kits, Box of Awesome has everything you need this month. That Weekender bag is like my go-to Weekender bag. At this keep, it's a great bag. I got I got the hammock. Uh, I got some other things. They keep sending me knives, which I appreciate. I got all kinds of knives now. You, know, you can never have too many knives. That's true. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. Maybe a knife box. Did they, you get the throwing knives? I did not get throwing knives. <laughs> <laughs> I got the throwing knives. Okay, well now I wish I did. Uh, they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. Each box is valued at around $70, but you only have to pay a fraction of that price. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD for 20% off your first box. boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD. Remember, some of these are adult gifts. You, you got, they're, they're dangerous. Yeah, don't give throwing knives to children. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, let's get to the craziest, weirdest, most insane headlines from around the world this week, starting with... Sloth bites teen during visit to Michigan pet store, ruining lifelong dream. I love the second part of the headline. My lifelong dream of not being bitten by a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> well, they Ruined. do. They do look like such, uh, you know, chill creatures. Uh, but apparently, they yeah, their bodies move exceedingly slow, dangerously slow. But that mouth of theirs, yeah, quick. They said uh, the girl said it was like it was like getting bit by a snake. Like mm -hmm. it just happened. And uh, yeah, I mean. And, and, and like, why is a sloth had to, in had Michigan, to get, like, first a, of all? Had to get a bunch of fucking shots. Oh, I'm that, sure. Because yeah. they're like, I don't know, it's a sloth. <laughs> like, who, know, who, who the fuck knows what's in that thing's mouth? I, I feel like, you know, a sloth in a pet store, not exactly. Well, it's not being sold as a pet. I guess some local, or maybe it is, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I guess this sloth. Oh, is, no, these sloths, they're not for sale. This sloth is owned by some local person in the area who brings it to the pet store, like, once a month for these, like, meet a sloth events that they hold because mm -hmm. like yeah i mean meeting a sloth would be pretty cool i guess sure uh, and, and while i'm here you know what maybe i'll pick up some animals for myself maybe a couple feeder mice yeah <laughs> um nope. yeah no it's uh i don't think they let you do it anymore in australia but uh, i got to hold the koala and you do, oh they're disgusting yeah, well you do just get to do the picture and, and it is you know i i agree that uh, in retrospect it's probably not the best they're for the koala nasty but, animals but uh they're at least chill and they're not going to bite you because they just love leaves yeah which they're bad at they're just uh, they're a dead end of evolution <laughs> they only eat one thing and their body is terrible at digesting it so they luckily luckily for you the bushfires took care of a lot of that i mean i don't feel good about that no but, one does but the uh yeah they they only eat eucalyptus leaves which have like virtually no caloric content so they have to eat eucalyptus leaves all day they and have they to sleep. eat just like a crazy amount and it, and it makes them sick and makes them tired and they literally like if you put perfectly good food in front of a sloth it will just sit there and starve. Oh, you, you mean a koala? Or in front of a koala, it'll sit there and starve to death before it eats it. Yeah. Even if it's fully capable of digesting it. I Even do... if it would be better off eating that instead of fucking eucalyptus leaves. Oh, this is just like a, uh, you know, a, a human who sits on the couch and eats Doritos. Yeah, it's just like that. <laughs> uh, I do like seeing them at the zoo. They're very cute looking. Yeah. That's why people love them. They look cute, just like the sloth. They are very cute. And the sloth is slow. Oh, it's so harmless. Now... We have reason to be worried. That sloth was sending a message. Yeah. It's sick and tired of being drugged down yeah. to this pet store and Look, paraded I, in front of these kids. I might be slow. But I'm not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a reason to uh, to gawk. Well, we have more animal news. Um, Ohio man's pet zebra nearly tears his arm off during attack. What are people doing with these animals? How are they getting them and why? 
Uh, there's a lot of places in this country where you can kind of just own whatever animal you want. Um, I mean, there. Are, okay, so I believe there are zebras up in uh, Santa Barbara. Well, there's a zoo there. No, but there's like loose zebras in uh, a certain area of Santa Barbara because they're like near Ellen's house. They're owned by someone, but they're allowed to free roam. So yeah, there's like every every once once or twice a year, someone posts a video on the internet. It's just like, wait, is that a fucking zebra on the side of the highway? But uh, yeah, this guy just owns a fucking zebra and they are, um, I mean, first of all, they're not horses and even horses you don't want to fucking mess with. No, a they're horse, in, very intimidating, a horse, large creatures. A horse could absolutely kill you with very little effort uh, and and they do often, but a, a zebra is like a horse that bites. Yeah. They're nasty animals. They have to survive in the fucking middle of nowhere in Africa. They have to, they, they have to evade lions. Yeah. Do you think they're going to put up with your shit? Some Ohio man? I guess they got some They got some strong jaws. This guy's arm almost I'm sure they do, yeah. Off. You ever seen a horse eat an apple? Yeah. Just that's, gone. That's your skull. Yeah, or your elbow. Yeah. Just. Damn. Stop masturbating and go to the front. Russian mercenary group Wagner launches porn site recruitment drive. <laughs> well, that's one way to kill your boner. Yeah, I guess so. Uh... What are you doing? Why are you jerking off? Should be over in Ukraine getting killed. Yeah, th there was like a news report this week that was just like, Russia readies, I forget the number, but it was way too high. Russia readies brand new, uh, this many troops. And it's just like, these poor kids. Yeah, these poor motherfuckers. Like, they're... They're just going to the meat grinder. Yeah, they're they're meat bags that are... Yeah, it's it's fucked up. Fighting a war for a guy who's like literally... This is what, like, I find the, uh, the, the people who are, like, really hardcore, like, pro-Ukraine, a lot of them get very dehumanizing with the way they talk about, like, the Russian army, and it's just like, bro, I guarantee you, like, the vast majority of these people would much rather not fucking be out here. Yeah. They don't have a choice in the matter. Yeah, especially now that uh, it seems as though they are, uh, you know, uh, working very quickly through the volunteer army and uh, yeah. now, you know, getting desperate enough to recruit on porn sites. Uh, so you got to feel bad. Yeah, it's just, it's not a good situation. Uh, apparently, I don't follow this shit too closely, but apparently they've, uh, the Russians haven't, they've been eerily quiet on their side of the front for well, quite a while now. they just dumped some so. fuel on one of our old drones. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool. The, the footage is amazing. Yeah, good for them. <laughs> they fucked up, though. I think they destroyed one of their own jets, the one... That hit it? The second one? They were trying to dump fuel on it, and they actually, they actually like, hit it, and they took out our drone, but I think their plane was so damaged that... Yeah, it was, uh, I think but the, I bet it was fun. The, the story was that they were trying to dump fuel on it so that they could take it down without damaging it, so they could get the tech off of it. But there was, like, a couple things. The, the drone that was attacked was, like, 30 or 40 years old anyway. Mm. It was one of the first deployed. And uh, also, they can remote wipe it, apparently. So oh. they just, like, hit the remote wipe button, like yeah, your I'm iPhone sure, gets I'm sure stolen. They, I'm sure they thought of, uh, they yeah. thought of that. Yeah, like, so. what if this thing is... Yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, next headline. Report. Florida textbook altered Rosa Parks story to remove references to race. Yeah, it's... Uh, God, I mean, sorry. Back to politics, back to Florida, back to DeSantis, I guess. But, like, um, yeah, this is the problem with, like, not, uh, you know, not talking about race at all. It's like, how the fuck do you explain something like Rosa Parks? And and they have a picture of it. And it's like, uh, Rosa Parks got on a bus and sat down. They said she couldn't sit where she could, where she was sitting. But she said, I'm going to stay in this seat. And that made her a hero. And it's like, if you, if you explain it like that, it makes no fucking sense. It's like, okay, cool. She, she got a bus seat. There's no larger, like, She's a feminist. accomplishment here at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe there was a, if it was the same one, there was also a Harriet Tubman one that didn't mention race. It was just like. She helped people. Uh, yeah, she helped slaves escape. But, like, no mention of, like, who the slave owners were. Or yeah, anything, yeah. or any uh, anything else around the uh, the topic. But yeah, no, there's pictures because I do follow the local news where I'm from, and like there's photos of schools where their entire libraries are empty yeah. because they have to go now. Uh, the, the books that get put in there have to go through like these approval processes of not just educators, but like uh, like parent teacher yeah. groups. Uh, if if even one parent like uh, says anything, yeah, then it's yeah. People who haven't even read... You know what would be really funny is if because they had to read all these books, uh, they were like, hey, wait a second. Maybe we're the bad guys here. No. No, no, no self-awareness. 
No, they just hear that the book has like a, a bad word in it, like period. And yeah. they're like, got to get rid of it. But this is wild because this is like a, I mean, the textbook companies, they're, they're playing ball. They're like, here's here's that new version of the textbook you asked for that removed all references to race. Well, like uh, the the three most fruitful like financial states for them are I, I look Texas, went, is Texas, the big one. California, and Florida. I mean, Texas is the reason why textbooks across the country are dog shit. Texas is the reason is a great emo band from the early 2000s. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like uh, Texas was the original state to be really fucking strict about what they accept in their textbooks. So it's like. It's like Europe with GDPR, like if a big enough entity uh, creates rules for something, the people who work in those well, fields, they just like, all right, we'll just make that version and give it to everyone. This is also the problem with educational books being a, run by for-profit corporations. I mean... They're going to alter it in order to make money, so like... Yeah, that is, that's a problem, but I mean... The, the local government certainly wouldn't do any better. It's like, yeah. we're really kind of fucked here. We're in a real, we're in a real bind, a real catch twenty two. It's fine. We have Chat GPT now. No one needs to go to school. And that never lies. So all good. Man sues Buffalo Wild Wings, saying boneless wings are actually just chicken nuggets. And he's right, and he should yeah, say it. Exactly. Boneless wings. Every time I see someone order, my wife does this all the time. She orders the boneless wings. And I'm like, you know, you're just getting chicken breast. Meat. Chicky fingers. You're getting white meat. You're getting little chicken fingers. Big yeah. nuggets. Like, wing meat is a specific. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a specific dark meat. It's uh -huh. and and eating the wing, you do feel a little barbaric. You feel like Ron DeSantis. Like Ron DeSantis. <laughs> I want to see him go at, go into some wings. Oof. But yeah, getting that meat off those wings, it's a bit of a challenge. If you want to, if you want to get hundred percent, I see a lot of lazy people. They just they get the the middle parts out and they toss oh, it. Like, you gotta clean you, them. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Still meat on that bone. <laughs> you can make a broth with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every two wings you eat, that's a chicken that died. So at least give them the respect of eating. All the meat Much like on eggs, board. though, uh, one wing is like two dollars now. Yeah. So, but look, they're delicious. Yeah. So, man hires six hundred dollar per hour national security lawyer to fight a sixty dollar traffic ticket. Yeah, I I don't know exactly how this happened. So this guy got a ticket spite. Well, he I don't know how he got connected to this lawyer, but um, he I guess he just called a bunch of lawyers, and one happened to be this lawyer <laughs> who like worked on the case of uh, that ended up getting Trump impeached for like trying to get dirt on Biden from Ukraine or some shit. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's hard to even keep track, but he worked on that case. And I guess he's like, you know what? I usually charge $600 an hour to do like uh, really serious international cases, but this traffic case that you're bringing to me, it's not fair. You're right. Let's and, do a fun uh, one. Yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm doing this for fun. So he did it pro bono. He's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's always fun to do a, do a fun one. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like when, uh, you know, uh, the Rolling Stones play at, like, the Roxy. Yeah. You're like, yeah, well, you know what, we're going to do a fun one before the yeah, tour that starts. Was cool. Yeah. It reminds me of the old days when things were simpler. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, this guy, like, fighting this traffic ticket, like, he comes in citing, like, case law from, like, of other states. <laughs> <laughs> got... You gotta imagine the, 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 the officer and the judge, just like, get out. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> just get out. No, no, no. <laughs> I wanna... Your Honor, you'll see that the Supreme Court of Montana said back in 1986 in being blank versus blank, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he literally brought a Supreme Court case. It would be state. amazing if it, like, literally changed the law because of it. Well, it turns out we've been yeah. enforcing this law all wrong. <laughs> Boca Raton woman asks city board to create Sugar Daddy and Mommy Appreciation Day. <laughs> and this lady, she looks very much like uh, the the recipient of, of sugar money. Mm, okay. Um, the funniest thing about his whole rant of hers, like, uh, she takes forever to just say, like, it would be cool if we had a sugar daddy and sugar mommy appreciation day. But, like, when she finally finishes, they're like, this is like the county supervisor's board. That's a city council thing. That's like their only response. This is, is like, like when like, Chad Kroger shows like, up to uh, That's a city council thing. You, you're in yeah, the wrong jurisdiction. The two surfer dudes that show up to random yeah. meetings. This is like, we need a sugar mommy appreciation day. Uh, yeah. So, was it filmed? Yeah. Cool. I like that. I think a lot of people in that area would applaud her for it. Probably. There's probably a lot of, definitely a lot of sugar daddies in Boca Raton. I don't know. The uh, you su sugar daddies tend to die young. The sugar mamas, they get, uh, yeah. Yeah, probably, uh, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Gym bros searching for protein heavy foods discuss the internet with TikTok videos of them eating dog food <laughs> as they claim pedigree has 600 more grams in one serving than recommended daily allowance. <laughs> This is why we need to ban this fucking app. It's making people yeah, do this... stupid shit. Yeah, they, 
And, and this, the funniest fucking... They're making dog food more expensive for everyone. The funniest fucking thing about this is so there's like dozens of these gym bros like filming themselves eating dog food and like having a bad time because dog food tastes terrible. But like once people actually started looking into this, I think BuzzFeed did like a deep dive and they're like, wait, no, their math is completely wrong. The amount of protein is like pretty much the same as human food. No, 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 no. Like they just like they did incorrect math and then that, that just spread. They're like, oh man, eating like a single bowl of dog foods like getting like twice your daily protein recommendation. Like, no, it's actually not. And you're eating dog food. So uh, maybe just stick to protein shakes, you fucking idiot. <laughs> They're too bored. Also, it's the like... The app is warping their mind and they can't call, can't call women in the gym anymore. Yeah. <laughs> also, like dog food is not tested to the same standards as human foods. So like, and dogs can digest a lot more than humans can. Yes. If you've ever owned a dog, you know that. So like they, they can eat whole pieces of rope. They allow shit to go into dog food that they wouldn't allow into human food because it would make a human sick. Whereas for a dog, they, it'd be no problem. No, but they they take that sickness feeling and they think that it's like uh, their muscles working. Yeah. Like oh yeah, oh. yeah, I can feel the burn. I mean, your abs after like uh, severe like stomach flu, they're like Damn, they hurt. Yeah. Oh yeah, got that Jesus Christ abs. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're like all dehydrated. I'm, and shit. Yeah, I'm cut. <laughs> Yeah, so what are you doing? Giving yourself food poisoning. Don't eat dog food. Uh, eat eat sink steak like a normal person. Yeah, sink steak. Put uh, a, a sink under hot water and also, then just uh, sink steak. Boom. I have no problem with these gym bros continuing to eat dog food. I mean, do what you want. Do what makes you happy. This I'm not is America stop you. after all. This is. Yeah. British Columbia man shocked to discover health file described him as redneck hick. <laughs> this is like when I called everyone from West Virginia redneck hicks. Yeah, well... People in the comments who live in West Virginia. They, they most, of, most of them confirmed that we were pretty much correct. Yeah, in our, <laughs> I told in you. our discussion of it, which yeah. is good. But yeah, this guy, he like hurt himself on the job and like went to it's Canada. So he got sent to like a government like physical therapist or some shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got access to his file. And it's like <laughs> doctors just talking shit on him like this fucking hillbilly hick. He's also he's faking it. Pretty sure he's faking it. And it's like, how much do doctors talk a lot of shit on their patients and their files? I don't. Is I guess so. I don't know. Like, I would assume the doctors, like, if you're a real piece of shit, uh, if you make, like, if you're like an anti-vaxxer or some shit, they'd probably like put that in your file. Just like, okay, just beware. Heads up. Yeah. This person's crazy. But um, this seems a bit excessive. Just calling the guy a hick. Just, just cause. That's not relevant. <laughs> Why is that going in his health file? I don't know, but. Uh... You know, maybe it was good to know for some reason. Well, no. Yeah. yeah, he survived. I can't on, imagine what reason, but uh, a diet of roadkill and moonshine. So yeah. you know, <laughs> always check for colon cancer <laughs> and dog food. Yeah, he's eating dog food. <laughs> <laughs> and final headline: Embattled Aussie media is a no-show in court for its fraud arraignment. That's a little, little update to the Aussie saga. Yeah. Uh, this was like a week ago, so I don't know if they've been updated but yeah they just straight up did not show up to their first court case even though from what we covered it seems like a slam dunk case courts love against that. them <laughs> and uh because of this like they had to like run out and like find a uh public defender who happened to be free to like come in and just a guy with papers hanging out of his and briefcase. someone came oh. in and like this so it's literally just this person sitting there and being like uh, does anyone know what Aussie media is? And just like try going through this big binder, like, uh, I don't know, not guilty. They could have zoomed us in. We could have told them everything. Yeah, well, that's not how it works. But yeah, so they, they missed their first day in court. Always a good way to start things off. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is on top of the fact that uh, two of these people have already like pleaded out. So Carlos Watson is the only one left. Fighting He's like, it, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, uh, the excuse, I'm giving them a free one. The excuse should be, I'm really sorry, but my lawyer was in the other part of the country fighting a $60 parking ticket. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. he did it, but he was bringing he up Supreme Court case fun. law. <laughs> so I couldn't show up. Whew. Anyways, it's time for us to go eat some pudding with our fingers. Hope you had a good uh, St. Patrick's Day, I guess. Uh <laughs> Slaunch it. Uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. But in the meantime, thank you again, of course, for always uh, giving the, the video a like, uh, engaging down in the comments below with uh, your fellow viewers, treating everyone with respect, and, uh, you know, making sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Yeah. So please do all of those things. And if you haven't already, Joe Biden is nuking TikTok from orbit. And also, ChatGPT4 is back. No, it's here, and it's better than the other one. Those videos are up now. 
and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.